All right, good evening, friends. Welcome to a very special episode of the Retro Launch Pod. My name is Wesley Whatnot, and I wanted to spend at least maybe like 10 minutes or so talking about my history with KMSU Radio in Mankato, Minnesota. And I also want to do this as a tribute to my former mentor and my good friend, Jim Gully Gullickson, who is going to be retiring as of June 28th, 2019. So in 2014, I decided to go back to school and decided to go into uh, mass media because I wanted to be in broadcasting. I had caught the bug of doing radio broadcasting just about a year earlier doing um, called the Huntley Hour. It was like a volunteer thing when I was at Southwest Minnesota State University in Marshall, Minnesota. Did my last semester there. They were working for DJs. I decided to do it. The station manager then, his name is David. He's now a news producer over in Connecticut, over at a Fox affiliate over in Connecticut, I should say. He uh, gave me the slot of 10 p.m. to midnight. It was a two-hour slot, played whatever I wanted, uh, music, you know, within reason, of course, you know, no songs that had swearing on it, because, you know, FC, we have the Federal Communications Commission here in the United States, and, you know, there are certain things you can't play during, you know, stuff like that, but it was student-run. It was a student-run radio station. It was part of, uh, it was also a TV station. They do news and stuff like that, and that was run by the students. So in 2014, I wanted to get I I really wanted to get back to school. I really wanted to learn how to do a, be a broadcaster. I really wanted to do that because I really enjoyed doing it, and I thought I could do it very well at it. You can say right now that you know what's happened since then. I got a broadcasting, but anyway, um, I just uh, I was trying to figure out what can I do, you know. So I took this class, um, pretty much about, you know, I thought it was a prerequisite for my major, found out it wasn't, but it was okay taking it anyway. And so um, it was pretty much like prep for a fake job interview. It was something I did, it was like the final project I did. And in November of 2014, I went to the KS, KMSU Studios, which were at the Alumni and Foundation Center on the campus of Minnesota State University, Mankato. And I decided to be, and I met Mr. Gullickson. Uh He was very kind, stuff like that, and, uh, and stuff like that. And that's also when I met Karen Wright, the operations director of KMSU, and the host of a show called Minnesota Morning. It airs from 9 a.m. to 11.30 on 89.7 The Maverick in Mankato. 91.3 FM in Austin. <laughs> I'll get to that. But, um, you know, I met him. He was a nice person, stuff like that. He definitely knew what he was doing. It was a fake job interview. And if I did the job, if I got the interview and got the job, I wouldn't have gotten it because I pretty much sucked. That's why I met Karen right too, and he said, "Oh, you know, we might get some student help in the spring. Uh, we'll let you know that kind of thing." And so a couple months went by. This is now probably like late January, early February of 2015. So um, I kind of like was thinking, "Okay, I need to get on the ball with this. I really want to do this." Um, they had me in mind before, you know, so. I emailed Karen Wright, tell her I was still interested in being a student worker with KMSU FM. And he, she said, okay, um, why don't you meet with me and stuff like that. And we can talk and see what we can do. So I went down there mid-February and she tells me, um, yeah, we can definitely have you on. Uh, we can definitely have you on our radio a la carte show. Uh, yeah, so Radio All Cart, for those of you who don't know, was started in 2009 by Mr. by Jim Gullickson as a way for the students to be more involved with the radio station because he believed in the students. They would be a vital asset to the station, that kind of thing. It started in 2009, been that way for the last 10 years as of this recording. You know. 
various hosts come and gone, come and gone. So she told me, uh, when are you available? She asked me when are you available? Well, I said I was probably pretty much available on Fridays. And so I was, you know, pretty much put in there. Why don't you, and she said, why don't you observe on that, fr that uh, next Friday, which was then the 17th of, or something like that, of February 2018, 2015. So I observed them. There was three guys. Aaron Bachman, Tony, I read his last name, Tony, and um, Joe, Joe Flannery. Uh, so uh, I met these guys. They were fantastic people. And then eventually I did it a few times after watching them. I think it was on a Tuesday. I watched a couple other hosts. But then I did it for Fridays. I met Aaron and Tony and Joe and stuff like that. And we were broadcasting from the Student Union, the Centennial Student Union, which was the big gathering place for students on campus on MSU Mankato. It's got pretty much everything there, food, that kind of thing. There was a lot of students who were tabling for various events, their clubs, their organizations, etc. And so we would interview them, ask them what they're doing out there at the student center, that kind of thing. Around, uh, we were there from, I decided from there, from, and we were broadcasting outside of the uh, coffee shop, so if you heard KMSU during the early part of I when I was doing it, you're a lot of coffee grinding, that kind of thing. But, and then eventually, I started doing it by myself. I enjoyed the living heck out of it. And I decided, okay, I want to do it this summer, which was then summer of 2015. So I did talk to Karen. I talked to Jim Gulkson about it. Jim Gully. I'll call him Gully from now on because that's his nickname. Um, so I talked to Karen and Gully. They said, if you can get it, you can get paid for it, provided you can um, get classes, take classes, and you can get paid for it doing the radio cart show. Yeah, so it wasn't that much. I mean, it was, it was enough to live on and stuff like that, you know, because I was paying student loans, that kind of thing. Paying, you know, getting loans for for tuition, that kind of thing. Which is okay. I got that all taken care of. But, yeah, and I saw it in the summer of 2015, I ended up doing it every day. I um, And we had a couple of interns, Emily, Emily Tycast and Lamar... So, Lamar, I forgot his last name now. <laughs> oh, shoot. I forgot his last name now. It doesn't matter. Lamar Jackson. I don't know. I don't remember his last name now. <laughs> so, um, the three of us would hope we'd, we'd be, uh, you know, enjoying this. We talked about numerous topics, that kind of thing, state fair. That summer, we act that. Later on that summer, we actually broadcasted from the Minnesota State Fair for the first time. We did radio cart two days of the State Fair for about three and a half hours, which was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was hot and humid, you know. <laughs> uh, we were broadcasting from the education building and at the State Fair, and, you know, it has no air conditioning. So when it got hot, it got hot. So, but that's beside the fact. Yeah, so I enjoyed it, stuff like that. And then um, I started doing radio cart three times a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that that following fall semester of 2015. Um, you know, I, I I did stuff like that. And then there we have yeah, our people on the, on the program. We actually had Logan Michaels, who is now kind of an up-and-coming local musician here in the Twin Cities. So... Uh, Props to him, that kind of thing. We had that. Um, and I also had my friend Nicole Schmidt um, as well join the show, you know, you know, talking with people, that kind of thing. When stuff was happening on campus, we could talk to people and that kind of thing. And then our radio cart decided to die um, roughly October of 2015. So... That thing always had to be wheeled out, put in, that kind of thing. But then eventually, nothing was coming out of it. Nothing. So roughly about the end of October 2015, we started to be in the studio again and stuff like that. And, you know, had, you know, 
it was a lot more fun. It was more a controlled environment, so it was not like a lot of noise and that kind of thing. So, you know, then in the winter of 2015, uh, we lost a show from a volunteer due to due to um, due to some technology issues, stuff like that. He decided not to do it anymore for a while. He went on a hiatus for about. He went on hiatus for a while. So I decided to talk to Gully and say, because he was the station manager, I said, hey, why don't we just try to do uh, a 90 minute version of Radio Al Cart? And he said, okay, fine, we can start that in the winter time, starting the uh, winter so, um, break, see if it works and stuff like that. And it did. I actually had a lot more fun doing a half, an hour and a half rather than an hour, more time to talk to people, that kind of thing. So I had people on. I had my friend Laura Garlo. I had Matt Bright again a few times, and we had talk, actually I had him actually the day of Star Wars: The Force Awakens hitting theaters for the first time. We had seen it Thursday night showing, and we were told not to spoil the movie. Oh my gosh, was that hard? But. There was some other things too that I enjoyed too about doing radio cart. Um, I did. I started in February of 2016. I started doing a a, a weekly triple T, which said stood for trivia Tuesday Thursday, and we had trivial pursuit cards, trivial tri, um, trivia trivia from the internet, that kind of thing. Like you know, you can find any trivia site on the internet. You know, you can quiz your friends. So we had a lot of fun doing that and event and Nico and Logan and Luke, the three of the four of us had a great time doing it. And then other things as well came up and you know you know then the end of the semester came around and I was the only one doing it until and I had occasional guests here or there for the rest of the summer until my last day on July first, twenty sixteen. But that's my brief history with KMSU. I also did news for the station. I actually was a part of the Southern Minnesota News Project as a reporter the spring semester of 2016. I did, and the news director was Nicholas Vasquez. But when he, uh, but when I decided to do the internship at KMSU, I did that for my internship. That's one thing you have to do as a mass media major at MSU. You have to have an internship. So I did that. And um, and I so I decided to do news twice a week, and so I anchored news for the station as well. I, I and I did that kind of thing. So for the first the first time I did it, it sounded by myself. Um, it sounded like something out of WKRP in Cincinnati, that old TV show. <laughs> uh, that's the comparison was made to that, but that's beside the fact. So, but you want to know why I'm talking about Gully now, do I? Let's get into that. I want to say this. Jim Goey Gullickson is the best darn human being I have ever met. He is a great mentor. He was a great mentor to me. And I know when I found out, actually I found out about his retirement from a fellow station manager actually here in the Twin Cities a fellow Amper station, which part, which is KMSU is part of, um, KFAI in here in Minneapolis. Um, the station manager told me I met her at the at a job fair earlier this year at US Bank Stadium, and she told me that he was retiring. And I'm going like, what? He's retiring? He doesn't look that. Old. I was thinking in my mind, he's not that old. He ain't that old. But, you know, I understand that you know, he's retiring now, you know. He's been in broadcasting. He's been in radio, bro- radio broadcasting and stuff like that for the last three decades. So he's been doing it since 1989. And I can, I, I've actually seen his work elsewhere, you know. He actually did some voiceover advertisements and actually introduced um, – I can hear him on an old video for KEYC New TV News 12. Um, it was probably in the early, uh, probably the mid 90s, 
or something like that. I can hear his voice very distinctly. His voice is pretty darn distinctive, if you know what I mean. But I wanted to, and then for other things as well, he did a, a Zan's Mexican restaurant commercial. Zan's is actually a Mexican restaurant off of Madison Avenue in Mankato, famous for their chili, chili, chili chilitos, which I never tried. I'm just going to say that now. I got to try it now. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. <laughs> but that's try the fact. I wanted to say this much. Gully, I'm going to miss you. Um, you have been a tremendous help to me personally. You know, this podcast, this, my voice being more, you know, broadcasty e. um, wouldn't have existed without your help. And I want to personally thank you. Gully, you're my friend. I love you. You're a great person. And I hope that sometime this summer, you will have a retirement party up here in the Twin Cities because I really want to give you a big hug and say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you to death. Um, I never would have been who I am today without you. My man, Gully, you are a great human being. And I love you. I'm going to miss you. And I'm very, very proud of you. You know, I know this is kind of long, but I just wanted to say this much. Because I can't stress it enough. I'm going to miss you, dude. I'm really going to miss you. And I hope that you'll keep in touch and maybe, you know, hopefully, because I know I did this, I invited you to my wedding. I hope that I'll see you there. <laughs> I really hope I see you there. <laughs> um, you know, because I invited you to my wedding. I know I did. But, Gully, once again, I'm proud of you. I'm going to miss you. And I want to say again, for the last time, thank you so much. You have given me so much, and I have given you so little. And this is my tribute to you. I love you, Gully. <laughs>